Hi everybody at Gate, welcome back. We are looking today at Jeremy Duff, Elements of New Testament Greek, we're in chapter 6, on the idea of the tenses. Well, not just the idea of the tenses, you're actually starting to learn the uh, the three next tenses after you've learned the present. You did the present already, we're now learning the future, the imperfect, the aorist tenses. And you've learned roughly their meaning, and you've learned how to recognise them from the epsilon augment and the sigma suffix. Just remind yourself, how do they help you recognise them? The present tense has neither of them. The future tense has just the sigma suffix. The imperfect tense has the epsilon augment. And the aorist tense has both the epsilon, epsilon augment and the sigma suffix. Okay, so that's how you recognise them. Now, sec, practice 6.3. I'm going to go through some of these with you. I'll go through the first six. And this is designed to help you to start thinking, what do these tenses mean? So let's just remind ourselves of that. Okay, so the present tense, happening now. Future tense, happening in the future. Easy. Tricky two are the imperfect and the aorist, because both happened in the past. But the imperfect happened in the past, and we're saying that the action was in some way extended in time. The aorist tense happened in the past, and we're not saying that it was extended in time. Aorist actually means undefined. So in that sense, the, the, how it's extended in time is undefined by the use of that tense. So present, now, future, future. Imperfect, in the past, extended in time. Aorist, in the past, not extended in time. Or we're not saying that it was extended in time. Okay, great. Now look at practice 6.3 on page 69, number one. I will see. Present, future, imperfect, or aorist. Come on. Future, I will see. Okay, number two. They were hearing. Now, when did this happen? Past, present, future. I were hearing happened in the past. So hold on, we don't know yet whether it's imperfect or aorist. They were hearing, is that extended in time in any way? Well, it is, isn't it? They were hearing suggests a process of hearing ongoing through time. They were hearing the sound of the ambulance as it went past. So there's this process of the ambulance going past and they were hearing it. So number two, you'd use the imperfect. They were hearing. She used to eat, number three. Okay, she used to eat. Past, present or future? Well, it's definitely not future or present. It's in the past. She used to eat. So it's imperfect or aorist. Are we saying that it's extended in time in any way? Or are we not saying that it's extended in time in any way? She used to eat indicates a kind of habitual action, doesn't it? It happened again and again, through time. So in some way it's extended in time. They were hearing is extended in time like that, through time. She used to eat is extended in time like this, through time. There's time going on that way. Yeah, They were hearing, long time of hearing. She used to eat breakfast, lunch, dinner, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and so on, extended in time. So you'd use the imperfect for number three, she used to eat. Number four, you are throwing. Past, present, future, easy. You are throwing, happening now, you'd use the present tense. Number five, he sent. Past, present, future. It is in the past, right? Because it's not future, not present. Uh, sent, now, when you say he sent, are you saying anything about how that action is extended in time? No, you're not. You're just saying that it happened. Yeah, all that all that you're indicating by the, the the statement he sent is that it happened and it was in the past. In which case you would use not the imperfect for something like this, but the aorist tense. That's number five, and number six. I see. I see. Future? No, it's not past. That's present. I see is present. Notice number six. I see. Number four. You are throwing. I see is not extended in time. You are throwing is extended in time. Both of those use the present tense. There's only one tense that can denote an action happening now. Simply understood. More complexity around the corner. Don't worry about that. But for now, you can easily see how those work. Okay. Now, do you want to go on and do number 7 to 12? Go on. All right. If you're keen. I'll do some of them. I'm not going to do them all. Number 7. A coup. So, now Duff says, don't worry about the endings, they're all in the first person singular. Well, you know that was in the first person singular because you recognise it. Where's the stem of the verb? 
It's there. It's from the verb akuo. So there's the stem. That allows you to identify what the verb means. It means I hear or I listen. It's also, however, got a sigma suffix. It's got a sigma suffix and no epsilon augment. What tense is it in? Correct. It is in the future tense. Okay, let's have a look at number eight. Number eight, lambano. Well, I'm not going to bother to write that one out. Come on, that's easy. You know, we recognise the verb, right? Lambano. That means um, uh, I uh, take or I... <laughs> My brain went dead. Lambano means I take or I receive. Is there an epsilon augment? Is there a sigma suffix? No, there isn't. So that's in the present tense. Number nine. I'll just do one more for you. Here goes. That's number nine. Eh. Pem. Pon. Okay. Pem pon. I read that right? Yeah. A pem pon. Okay. Where's the stem? Okay. Find it. So you've got to learn your vocab, but you really do need to learn your vocab, otherwise you're not going to be able to spot the, uh, the stem in among the clutter of everything else. So, uh, pemp is the stem from pempo, meaning I send. Okay, ending. Don't worry about that. Is there a sigma suffix? Is there an epsilon augment? Yes to the epsilon augment. No to the sigma suffix. So if it's got a sigma suffix and no epsilon augment, it is in the imperfect. All good so far? I'll oh, just do one more. Come on. Because I love you. Right. How about this? Eh. Piss. You. Ah. Forgive me, Father, if I have sinned. Epistusa. Oops, and what are you? Okay. Epistusa. Let's get rid of some of this. Um, there we are. Epistusa. Can you find the stem? Yes, you can. It's pistu from pistuo. Pistuo meaning, that's right, I believe. Pistuo. Right, now, has it got an epsilon augment? Has it got a sigma suffix? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Three bags four. Epistusa, so it has an epsilon augment and a sigma suffix, and therefore it is aorist. That's your lot, okay? We have now done practice 6.3. We have got to the point where you know the basic meaning to of each of the four main, most common tenses in Greek, present, future, imperfect, aorist. You know how to recognise them from the, sigma, the epsilon augment and the sigma suffix. And you have had some practice in... Uh, both figuring out how they'd be used, the first few examples I gave you today, and figuring out how to recognise them from the way they're written, the last three or four I've just done here. What we're going to do next is to fill in the thing that previously I just denoted by a little dash, that is the endings of the other three tenses. You know the present endings already, you don't yet know the future, the imperfect or the aorist, although actually you do, because there's a great bit of good news at the beginning of the next video, you already know one of them, but that's around the corner. Tune in next time as we start in section 6.4, looking at the endings. But for now, 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, five, six days a week, we'll have you reading the New Testament in Greek in no time at all. God bless. Bye for now.